Last year, in 2019, the Federal Trade Commission received more than 25,000 complaints about romance scams. According to new data released just yesterday, victims have reported losing $201 million to these scammers. That's up 40% from the year before. For the past two years, more money has been lost to romance scams than any other type of scam reported to the FTC. This is not the reason why I'm sharing my story with you today. It's because... I didn't take, take, I wasn't taken for a ride that I want you to protect yourself. In tomorrow's episode, I will actually give you more tips on how to protect yourself from con men and tell you what I did. But for today, I just want you to be aware. You think it might not happen to you. It happened to me, and I never thought it would. Romance scammers, it changes. But they post fake profiles, not just on dating sites, but they do it on Facebook. And I've I even had people, I have like 10 direct messages today in my Instagram of guys saying, Hi. Hi, who are you? Romance scams are very scary. They target people through direct messaging. Their goal is to steal your heart and then steal your money. Now, I didn't lose any money in this case, but I wondered... How could I fall for something that I knew better? See, it all began with a friend request. Now, who doesn't need more friends? And, and I know the Pope said, you know, Facebook friends, they're not really your friends. Well, this was 10 years ago. So I accepted his friend request even though I didn't know the person. So then I checked their profile and and I found out I have no common friends with them. That was the first red flag that I should have been aware of. Then I, I check out this person. I look at their pictures that they have in there. I see what kind of posts they have. What kind of account is this? What, what, is this something new? Who is this person? And I try to place, who, who are they? Did I meet them somewhere? But, but nothing comes to mind. Then I see they're in the United Kingdom. I hadn't traveled to London since I was a girl. Across the pond from us in the United States. Another red flag. I hadn't been there. I don't know anyone from there. I have a girlfriend that lives there. And I I might know a couple other people. But this Harry, I didn't know. So normally at this point, I tell you to unfriend and block this unknown friend. Why, you ask? He could be a great guy. Nah. Who cares? Because you haven't met face-to-face, ever, 
Furthermore, you don't know who the person is that you have connected to on the other end of that account. The rest of the story actually happened to me, and all of it is true, except who the person was on the other end, because I still don't know who it is. I had fallen for a love scam, but I didn't know it until I told my closest girlfriends. Okay, so some deets. The first thing I did, I went into work the next morning and I was working for a law firm and I told the girl that sat next to me in the cubicle next to me. And she said, hmm, well, congratulations. But she had this worried look on her face. So she went and told another girlfriend at the law firm who immediately called her guy and they did a search trying to trace the email address. They asked me, send, send me, send me the stuff that he sent to you. Because what they do is they get you off of the site where they connect with you and then they start to communicate with you on your personal email. So she comes back a couple of hours later and she says, we can't trace this person. They could not find where the point was of where this email was coming from. So I thought, okay, uh, let me try to find out this guy where he lives and his address. And when I finally figured that out, you can go in Google and you could try to search for the address and guess where the address led? In the middle of a street. There was no house, the address didn't match, and I was standing in the middle of a street searching Google Earth, trying to figure out what is going on. So my girlfriends at work were concerned. So I thought, well, let me check in with my other girlfriends. And I looked through my emails and I found an email from October 2, 2012 at 1026 AM from one of my girlfriends in San Francisco. And it's very telling. She says, hopefully this one is not a stalker. <laughs> and then she says, is Harry Muslim? Well, like that matters, right? But I remember as the scam wore on and things that he told me, it was so interesting because in the background, I could hear the Avan playing. That's the call to prayer. And he would pretend that he was in some Muslim country or I don't know, he was in Malaysia or something like that. So I thought, oh, really? These people really know how to pull on your heartstrings. They even know that you are from a certain religion and then they try to weave that in. I mean, they're very clever. And so then I looked at a series of emails that I had with another girlfriend in where she says, what's new with Harry? Question mark, anything? And this was a couple of days ago after Carol no, it was the next day. And uh, she's saying, you know, keep me updated. And I said to her, oh, he, he was very upset. But it wasn't just about your message. I sent him one pretending to know his identity was some guy named Greg that I met on a flight to LA in August. He thought I sent it to him by mistake and was upset. I was talking to other men while he was busy with a project. 
So I punched back with a timeout email and questioning his disappearance on weekends and his inconsistency in pursuing me. He insisted me and his mum are the only two women in his life. I'm going to keep digging because I don't believe him yet. <laughs> yet. Like he had to convince me that, you know, I had to believe him. So my girlfriend said, replies, whoa, keep on digging and keep me posted. He should understand you're being leery of things. Okay. Yeah, he knows. And they're very trained in that. So then the next message is in the evening of that same day on October 3, 2012. And I said to her, Hal's Bells, he called twice today. First time he said he needed to disclose something. Then he kept me waiting for three hours before he called back. He won a major contract and is traveling to Malaysia on Sunday. He wants to get engaged in one to two weeks and marry in January. I said uh, yes to the engagement, but I didn't know about the January date until I got to know him better. He wants me to travel with him wherever he goes. So I don't know about the home in L.A. situation and school. Now he's talking about bringing me to Manchester, United Kingdom. I don't even have a valid passport. See, the scam began with, oh, he's going to move to L.A., which is where I wanted to go at the time, and I wanted to go to school, and he was all being so supportive, and then the scam switches. And then my girlfriend says, I have no idea how to respond to this. You don't know what this guy smells like, let alone anything else for certain. I hope and pray you do what's right. So that was very good advice. So then I tell her an hour later, I said, you know, I I'm just going to deactivate my Facebook account. This guy's a stalker. He's not real. His voice is of a Jamaican guy, which doesn't match the pictures of a white guy. Also on Monday, I called um, and there's a local school here. He claimed that he had gone to a, a school here. And when I called the school, I told my girlfriend they could not confirm that a Harry Rich, oh, that was his last name that he used, uh, graduated from there. But I never said anything to him that I knew. That's when I sent the email to him pretending to think that I knew he was who he was and asking if this was Greg. He went ballistic. Within an hour, he called asking, did I know who it was and that I had sent an email message to him by mistake. He said he couldn't trust me because I was talking to other men. When I told him I didn't make the mistake and that the email was intended for him, then he realized he was being a jerk and tried to back down. But he had already shown me his mean streak and he was livid. I don't think so. I just didn't think so. And my girlfriend responds the next morning, okay, now I guess I'm glad you found out sooner than later. She says, what a bummer, it's sad. Now on to your next conquest. Have a great day, your true love is out there. I know it. And then she signs it, love and kisses, love struck. I'm glad I had that email to look back on today because I had actually deleted everything I thought dealing with this situation. I didn't want to think about it. I had no intention of ever wanting to deal with it. I didn't tell anybody about it. I, I don't know if I was ashamed or, or, you know, here I was a professional and <clears throat> I knew better. And even when I told my sister after the first weekend that this happened, she says, oh, no, it's a scam right away. See, when you're not in the situation, other people can see things more clearly. And the scammer 
or anyone, if you're in a relationship that tells you don't tell anyone, you, you better tell somebody. Because what they're trying to do is isolate you from your friends, from your family. And that is a ploy that many abusers use, um, not just in scams uh, and, and dating. This could also happen in your marriage, in your relationships. It happened to me with um, one of my husbands. And I, um, you know, you have to choose. You know, you, you have to choose between the person that you think you're in love with and people that you've known all your life, your family, your friends, your relatives. And that makes it very difficult. It puts you in a very bad situation. Unfortunately, many of us who are looking for love in all the wrong places, I hate to say it, you know, the love that you want, that you're seeking out there, is not the love that you get from your father or your mother or someone in your family. The love of a person that you meet is not instantaneous. That is not real love, people. Love is something that takes time, that grows. Yes, I believe in instant attraction, absolutely. But you have to be so careful that it's not lust. Don't jump into things right away. Get to know the person. Take your time. Don't do something you don't want to do. I've had many failed relationships. I have not been lucky at love. And it is perhaps that experience that I have learned a very hard lesson that you don't need to be attracted to the guy. You don't need to convince yourself that this is the best thing that ever happened since sliced bread. Just let them show you who they are. See if their words match their actions. Most times not. And for me, after 20 years of meeting new people, dating, getting to know someone, getting involved with someone, that was the best indicator to me because I put my journalistic hat on. I was an observer and that's what I did. Someone comes new into your life, start looking at what they say to you. Even keep a diary, write down in your journal. I mean, many people do this already. I just, I didn't do that. I you know, journals, it, it takes time. And I just didn't feel comfortable pouring all my, you know, my deep secrets onto a piece of paper and leaving them there for somebody to find. Your most intimate feelings are hard to share with a friend, with a family member, with anyone. Sharing this publicly, I'm not ashamed of what I went through, but there was a warning yesterday that went out because it is Valentine's Day to be careful of scams out there. There's so much more I could tell you on the details of the story, but I just want you to know how to protect yourself. And in tomorrow's episode of Heart and Home, I'm going to share with you what to do and make sure that you don't fall into the same situation. Happy Valentine's Day.